the day that the Lord has made, and we are certainly glad of it. We're thankful for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came to give his life a ransom to die for the sins of the whole world. We want to just say good morning to everyone that's here and those who are listening to us who have joined in with us on Facebook. Uh, we thank you for joining in with us, and we just pray that uh, something is said and done today that will be a blessing uh, to all of us. We've come to do that which God has called us to do, and uh, we know God is faithful, and uh, great is his faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning, and I am so glad for that. I'm thankful for all of the things that he has done. We, we want to uh, just thank God for... Uh, time that we can come together and worship. These are some very uncertain times, but this, these are times of opportunity, opportunity to, for us to show uh, God's goodness and uh, allow God to show himself strong in our lives. Amen, amen. I want to uh, share with you a little bit of devotion this morning, and I want you to think with me, uh, whether you're here or whether you're on uh, Facebook, I just want to uh, uh, share a passage or passages of scripture, and uh, it's one of the favorite that I have found uh, throughout uh, the word of God. In the Psalms, the Psalms uh, 146, it starts by saying, praise ye the Lord. It closed by saying, praise ye the Lord. 147 opens by saying, praise ye the Lord. And it closed by saying, praise ye the Lord. 148 opens by saying, praise ye the Lord. It closed by saying, praise ye the Lord. And 149 opens by saying, praise ye the Lord. And it closed by saying, praise ye the Lord. 150 opens by saying, praise ye the Lord. And it closed by saying, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. This is a good day to praise him, just to worship him and to allow ourselves to just come into his presence and allow him to breathe upon us afresh the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask uh, that we will have uh, just a little bit of music. We don't. Uh, we don't e own any of the music, but I just want us to play something softly, and uh, you who are here and those of you who are on Facebook, if we would just take a moment to just give thanks to the Lord, allow your minds to uh, meditate on what the Lord has done for you throughout this week. Uh, allow yourself to meditate on what God has done for you throughout this year. Uh, there are those uh, who have not been as successful as some of us and some of us may feel that we've not had a very good year but I tell you God is good and he is greatly to be praised and we must thank him for every day is a day of thanksgiving so if you will uh, as we would just have a little music I want you to just bow your head and just begin to praise God just thank God for his goodness think about what he has done Think about what he is doing. God is a wonderful God. He is greatly, greatly to be praised. I laid in my bed this morning and I was praying and somewhere around 4, 4.30 uh, this morning and just thinking about all of the things that the Lord has done. And I, like many of us, could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, could have gone on away from here. But because of the goodness of the Lord, he spared me one more time. And it's not because I've been so good, not because I've kept his commandments so well, but because of his grace, his mercy. God has given me another chance. God has given you another chance. Those who are here, God has blessed and given you another chance to worship him, to praise him. Those who are listening, over Facebook who join in with us. You are here by the goodness of God. And it's a good time to just tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just thank him this morning. You may be sitting 
on the side of your bed. You may be sitting at your kitchen table. You may be in your living room. Nobody's really looking, and it doesn't matter whether people are looking or not. This is a good time just to raise your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. I bless your name, God. Tell the Lord he is good. We listen over the television. We listen over the radio. And we see that this variance that's raging now, and it's affecting a lot of people. A lot of people have already gone on before us. But yet God has spared us to be here. And that we all to say, God, we praise your name. We praise you in the sanctuary. We praise you, God, in the depths of our heart. We say we bless you right now. You are wonderful, God. You are so wonderful. You are greatly to be praised. Somebody ought to just tell him, I love you, God. I love you for what you've done. I love you for what you're doing. God, I've decided that my critic is good with you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know you hold tomorrow. You brought me, not only from a mighty long ways, but you brought me all the way. And for this, I am thankful. Oh, bless your name, God. Bless your name. I hope somebody's just praising you right now. You don't have to holler loud. And there may be somebody who feel like hollering. It's okay. God, the Bible says, he inhabits the praise. You praise him your way. I praise him my way. Others praise him their way. But the important thing is that we praise him. We come and we worship him. We thank him for every good, every perfect gift. For he is the giver of every good and every perfect gift. God, we come today, we lift up our voice to you, we lift up our hearts. God, we praise you in this sanctuary. We know that you are good, we know that you are greatly to be praised. God, we have people on our list that we've been praying for for a good while and we continue to pray for them. God, we come to no less today than to lift them up and ask you to touch, touch in a mighty way. Touch them, God. Fill them up wherever they are, whatever their need is. Would you please touch? God, I lift them to you. Oh, God, Sister Yvonne Lowe, you know her, God. You know her down sitting, her uprising, her thoughts are for all. You've been good to her. And we pray that you'll continue to hold her and keep her in the palm of your hand. We thank you, God, right now for Sister Peggy Woodford. Would you touch God? We thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for her daughter. Thank you for a son-in-law, God, who is right there giving their best, supporting. God, we just praise you for it. We ask you to move in a miraculous way. You are able to do it. We thank you for Sister Ashley, Brother Ashley. We thank you, God, for Brother Ashley standing so close by his wife's side and God, just encouraging her heart. Thank you for her children, Lord. We bless thee, oh God, right now. Please, sir, do it right now, God. We praise you, God. Sister Jackie Ferguson, who went through surgery this week. And God, you allowed her to come home on yesterday. We thank you. We pray that you would help her to mend, God, in a speedy way. We know that you can do it. There is no secret what you can do. God, we just praise you right now. Thank you for my 
sister over in Little Rock. God, you know. Oh, God, that uh, she's been tested and, and God, uh, to our surprise, we know that she was tested positive, God, but we just believe in you. We know you're able, God. I pray for her. I pray, God, all across this land, this country, there are so many people that have asked us to pray for them, God, and we just lift them up to you right now. We ask you to please uh, look and have mercy. Thank you for Mother Jackson. Thank you, God. We thank you for Brother Herbert Jones. We thank you for all of our elderly, God. We bless you indeed. We bless you indeed, God. Thank you for Sister Daisy. God, uh, we just pray that you would be with her. Brother James Johnson, fill him up, God, who's to go through surgery. God, in the name of Jesus, I know you can do it, God. You've done it for others. You are the same today, yesterday, and forever. We thank you, God, for all of the caregivers. We thank you, God. I thank you for my wife that at home with her mom this morning. I pray, God, you will continue to just bless and move in a miraculous way. Pray for my daughter, Demetria, who's been had some kind of little virus this week, tested, and said that she was tested, and it came back negative. We thank you for that. I thank you for my niece, in Pine Bluff, Tanya, would you please touch? God, I guess we could just be here all day and call in names, but God, you know, some of them we may forget, some we may not, but we ask you collectively, God, just touch in the power, the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Bless each church door that stands open in your name pray for Reverend Hampton this morning as he is again at the greater St. Paul Baptist Church. We pray God in the name of Jesus, Pastor and Sister Gully, oh God help them to mend in a mighty way. We continue to pray oh God for Reverend Steve Lake, Reverend Johnny Davis. God there are so many people on our list, God, and we're just praying and we believe in you. God, we ask you right now, somebody listening over the Facebook right now, they may be thinking within themselves, I wish he knew to pray for me. And whoever they are, God, I pray right now, somebody standing in the need of a blessing. Somebody, God, their heart is heavy, carrying a load, God. I pray for the church in Chicago, Illinois, the home of life, Baptist Church, and the home going of Reverend Johnny Henderson. God bless his family, bless the church, bless all of us, God. We need thee so badly. We need thee right now. We need thee every hour. Would you please have mercy? Now, God, bless all that we are to pray for. Keep us looking to the hills from which cometh all of our help. For we know that I have cometh from you who's made the heavens and the earth. Bless my children and grandchildren. Bless us all one by one. Bless us all together. All of the children, all of the grandchildren, that's a part of the St. Mark Baptist Church. I pray, God, for those whose name I don't have and don't know about right now. But, God, I just pray you bless this house. Bless us one by one. Bless us all together. We do pray, God. We do pray. We bless you right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah, God.
praise you, God. We pray for marriages, God. We pray for the schools, God. We pray for the children, God, in the name of Jesus. Breathe upon us right now, Lord. We thank you right now. You're good, God. And you are greatly to be praised. Have thine own way. You are the potter. And we are the clay. Mold us, God. Mold us right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, yes, we thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for our ministry here. Thank you for Minister Nikki, God. I praise you for her and her mom and family, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all of us. We're standing in the need of a blessing. Breathe upon us, God. Breathe upon us right now. We need you, Master. We need you like never before. Breathe upon this country, God. Breathe upon the country. Oh, God, would you please breathe upon us, Master. Oh, God, oh, God, help us. Help us, Lord. All the political garbage that's going on, God, would you please, sir, have your way. You're able, God. You can do it. You can do it, God. You said call upon you. You would hear, you would answer our prayers. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. 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 Pray for Pastor Brown, God. We pray for his wife. Pray for his granddaughter, God who's going through right now. But God, in the name of Jesus, heal and deliver. Heal God and deliver. Would you please have mercy? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless thee, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we say it is done. It is done. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you just lift your hands and just tell the Lord thank you. You may be in this place. You may be listening over the Facebook. But you can raise your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't nothing wrong with giving him thanks. Hallelujah. Nobody pulled a gun on him. Nobody made him do anything for you. He did it because he's God. He's a God of love. He's a God of patience. He's a God of forgiveness. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. He is a good God. And we should bless him. We should bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a passage of scripture. And, and bless Minister Nikki, if she'll come and lead us in, a, in her own way. And uh, uh, we know God is able. Amen. And uh, the uh, Psalms, Psalms 34, one of my favorite scriptures. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exhort his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. They looked on him 
and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, laying the hand of the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Six verses says scripture, God bless the reading of his book. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on and worship the Lord this morning. How many of you need the Lord to survive on today? Hallelujah. 
how many of us believe we need him to survive. Yes, I need him. You need him. We're all a part of his body. What a mighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing God to uh, use us. He is a mighty God, and he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, uh, Minister Nikki. Thank you for uh, helping out. Uh, it's one of the... Uh, Things I, I used to say uh, years ago uh, when I was coming up, and uh, in my family, my my mother was was a, a real good singer, songster. My uh, one of my brothers, he was a piano and organ player, and uh, my some my siblings, they could sing, they could some play organ, some play. Uh, piano, some could do some of everything. I was the only fellow, fellow that didn't have no talent. Amen, amen. They could sing, they could do it all. But God gave me an opportunity uh, to preach his word. And uh, I try to do the best I can. Amen, amen. God is a mighty God. And I appreciate him uh, so very much. I want to do part two uh, today. A message that uh, I sought to do on last week, which comes from the 24th uh, chapter of St. Luke, the 24th chapter of St. Luke. Amen. 24th chapter of St. Luke. Amen. I want you to pray for me and uh, pray with me. Uh, in the 24th uh, chapter of uh, St. Luke, I want to uh, read verses 25 through uh, 27. Uh, and we'll come back and try to cover uh, some of what we did on last week. 25 through 27. Amen. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Amen. I want to talk to us about believing the unbelievable, part two. Amen. Believing the unbelievable, part two uh, of that uh, particular. As you are aware, on last week we talked about uh, two men. One named uh, Cleophas, we don't know the name of the other, but they were walking uh, the street, uh, Emmaus, Jerusalem, and uh, they were talking among themselves about what had gone on uh, as it pertained to the crucifixion of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus had... Uh, been crucified, nailed to the cross. He had hung there. He had bled. He suffered, and he died. And not only did he bleed and suffer and die, but he was taken down from the cross, and he was carried and placed in a borrowed tomb. It was a tomb that belonged to Joseph, Amathea. Uh, they took him and they laid him in that tomb. 
Jesus had prophesied, he had spoken to his disciples. He had told them a number of times what was going to transpire, what was going to happen. It should have been no surprise to them how things pan out because Jesus never allows us in those type of situations to be caught off guard. He told them they wouldn't have to wonder. They, there was no need for them to be surprised. He was falsely accused and he was led out the long route around where he would be whipped with a whip of bones and metal in it. His flesh would be torn and they would take him and not that they literally actually took his life but he gave his life. Yes. He laid down on that cross yes. and allowed them to drive nails in his hand and spike in his feet. And they picked him up and put his cross down in a hole and hanging there between heaven and earth. And some hear him crying out, thinking now that he's crying out to Elijah when he was actually saying, Eli, Eli, Lambaya, Sabetha, Naya, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? When he had decided, when he had decided, it was enough. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he said, it is finished when he decided. And he gave up the ghost. He died. He died on that Roman cross. They took him down. And they carried him and put him in a borrowed tomb. If, if you have to borrow something, it, the indication is it belongs to somebody else. And if you borrow it, it just makes good sense that you understand up front. If you're going to borrow it, it means that you will have to return it. No, no one ever heard of anybody barring a grave or, or a graveyard or anything. The, the purpose of having a grave is for whoever it's designed for to be buried in it. Here's a paradox. It was designed and it belonged to Joseph of Amathea, but it was also designed by God even before Jesus himself left the portals of glory that he would go by and spend time in that grave for a certain period of time that his name and his body and all might be glorified. Look at him in the grave. Women who loved him, women who ministered to him, they seen what had happened and they were not satisfied that he had a proper burial. So they came on Sunday morning to anoint his body, discussing among themselves who are we going to get to roll the stone away? And little did they know the stone had been rolled away. 
And not only had the stone been rolled away, but the one who they were going to see and to anoint, he was not there. There was an angel and says, who are you looking for? The one you're looking for, he is not here, but he has risen as he said. Now, notice this. This is very important because I want to come back to this in a minute. He has risen as he said. He, he has risen as he said. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, referring to himself. He said it. And I will raise it up. And now they have gone to the tomb to discover that he is not there. They run. They tell Peter. They tell other disciples that we went to the tomb. He we discovered stole his body away or some suggest that maybe just maybe they really didn't put him in that tomb they put him somewhere else but the truth of the matter is though the women had followed this situation and they knew where they had put him and they seen them roll the stone to the door that's why they asked the question who are we gonna get to roll the stone away and this this stone Weighed a ton or so. Now, now I don't know how you feel about it, but I've done some construction work, and I've seen some rocks move that did not weigh a ton. And uh, I've I've worked in construction where I've had to help move some big rock. And most time, if the rock is past a certain weight, you have to have some kind of machine to move it. Who are we going to get to roll the stone away? Somebody said King Jesus is going to roll the stone away. He does it of his own power, his own anointing. He does not have to lift a finger to do anything. He just speaks. If you don't believe he has the power and had the power to just speak, uh, the Bible says that in the beginning, the world was without, uh, was form and void and it didn't have anything. But God says, let there be and everything he said, let be came into existence. Man was not even in existence, but God took dust from the ground, dirt, dirt. He wasn't even a good lump of clay, but God grabbed abstract from dirt and pulled it together and made a man, he has the power. And now the women find he's not there. And they go and tell Peter and John and Peter and John, they rush to the tomb and they go to find out what's going on. And they discover he was not there. The angel says, why are you here? Why are you, what, what, what's up? Why, don't, don't you remember? What he said, he said that he would rise. He is not here. They rushed back and told Peter and John and the others, and these boys on their way on the road of Anaya says, uh, this is the third day talking to Jesus and didn't even know they were talking to him. And Jesus comes. What is this that you're conversating about? What is it that you, what, what, why are you looking so sad? And I tell you, it does not matter who it is. You may be feeling sad right now. You may be feeling down. You may feel like throwing in the towel. You may feel like giving up. But I tell you, we serve a God who knows how to show up at the right time in the right place. And he knows how to comfort us even in the midst of our sadness, our pain, and our hurts. He comes and he says, What's, what is this? 
And look at them. Cleophas, he, he's, he, he's, he's kind of just thrown back. He's, 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 he's kind of uh, dumbfounded. What? what, what, what you, are you a stranger? You don't know what's going on? Nobody who lives around here ought to be dumb of what's going on. If you've been around here the last two or three days, you know you must be a stranger. You must not be from here. What are you, what are you talking about? And Jesus said, and why are you sad? Now watch this. He had not allowed their eyes to come open. Now catch this. This is paradox because their eyes were open and they were looking at him. But they didn't know they were looking at him. They were talking to him and didn't know that they were talking to him. And so they telling him about him who knows him who he is himself. I don't know if that was good English or not, Joe, but it, it sounded like it would be all right. But anyway, they, now, now they are talking to him. What's up? Are you, are you a stranger? And he begins to chat with them. He began to talk with them. He began to discuss with them. And isn't it good that when we are going through, isn't it good to know that Jesus will come right along beside us? The writer said, he walks with me. Yes, he, he talks with yes, me. He, he tells me yes. that I am his own. Hallelujah. He's walking with him. He's talking with him. He is getting them to understand, trying to get them to understand who it is that's talking to them. Have you not heard about this man, Jesus? He was a prophet. He was mighty in scripture. He was mighty in the word. And we had high hopes that he was going to save Israel. Have you not heard how he was turned over to the authorities. They put him to death. They nailed him to the tree. They put him to death. He died. And they buried him. Yes. And this is the third day. There's some things you say yourself ought to cause the bulb to go off in your head. Just them saying this is the third day should have struck a nerve in their head. We had women who went to the tomb and they discovered his body was not there. There was an angel that said he's not here. The angel said he has risen as he said. My God from God. Catch this. I'm not going to hold you long. Jesus, Jesus looks at him. And, and I have to believe he, he just looks. And he says, oh, oh, fellas, fellas, foolish, foolish of heart. Slow to believe. Do you know what you, you are saying? Do you know what you are looking for? Do you know who you are looking at? Foolish. Did not necessarily call them a fool. You know, the Bible does describe a fool as one who says there is no God. They were not saying there was no God. 
they were saying the one we had hope that would save Israel, he did. And Jesus is saying, I'm right here. I'm right here. Do, do you not see me? They did not know who he was. And you know Jesus would do that every once in a while. He did, he did it actually, he did it actually on the sea. You, you do remember they were on the sea and Jesus come walking across from the mountain, walking on the water. And they became frightened. They said, it's a ghost. Somebody said, it sure is. And then somebody said, no, it's not. It's Jesus. Peter, who's the leader of the group, had some doubts that it was Jesus. Even though he had seen Jesus feed 5,000 besides women and children with two little fish and five body loaves of bread, that's a miracle, but I've never seen anybody walk on water. But in his doubt, he does say this. If it is you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come on. Come on. What? And you can imagine those other boys on that boat. They said, Peter, I, know, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get out there on that water talking about walking. I, I probably wouldn't do that now. I know you, you uh, G, but Jesus says, come on. And Peter got out, and he started walking. Watch me now. I said he started walking to make one step would mean he just stepped in the water. Okay? But the Bible said he walked. So it doesn't make any difference if he made two steps, three steps, or ten steps. He walked on water. Because Jesus says, come on. If you got enough faith, if you believe that it's really me, come on. He got out of the boat. He began to walk on the water. Jesus sometime will not allow himself to be seen or revealed in order to show us just how much faith we really have. So them boys, they, they, they are there and they, are, they, they don't know who he is. And Jesus said, oh, foolish one, slow of heart. And the Bible says this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and close that. I tell you this. The Bible says this. Watch this. And he began to teach them from the Old Testament. Watch this. From Genesis on up through Malachi. Wow. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. They, they tell us Emmaus was somewhere around six and a half to a little over seven miles. A seven mile journey, Jesus teaches those two disciples, not main disciples, not Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, and Thaddeus and all of them, but these two, one name is given, the other one name is not given. He began to teach them. Wow. You, you know, one of the things, uh, man, I, I would, as a preacher, as a preacher, 
Man, I, I was, I was, uh, uh, the brother would have wrote that down. Because I'd like, I'd like seeing how Jesus really exegetes and, and how he really uh, 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 taught that scripture that much in seven miles. Everything pertaining to Christ and his glory. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Watch this. He began to teach them. And, and I'm telling you, there are some of us go to church Sunday after Sunday. And when the preacher is preaching, and I know I get bored sometimes, but when the preacher is preaching, we wonder sometimes, in matter of fact, a man asked me, <laughs> asked me this just a couple of days ago. He said, he said, Rabbi, I want to come hear you preach. He said, how long you preach? <laughs> I said, I said, I don't know. It just depends. I, but I try to preach till I get through. He said, well, that scares me. <laughs> all right, all right. But Jesus teaches the whole Pentateuch. The Septuagint, he teaches that in seven miles. One, one of the things I really missed this year and last year is going to Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, going to the December conference of the National uh, Baptist Convention. And uh, that, that, you know, there are people uh, that I am so amazed and dumbfounded by, and there, there are those who proclaim the word so good I'm telling you uh, you I, you know I'm glad you know uh, they they had CDs now they do streaming they do all this kind of stuff and uh, they used to have uh, uh, you know cassettes and had all of the and, and eight track players y'all most of y'all don't know them about the eight track players that's been way back there maybe James Davis probably remember he old so in a way uh, we but 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 I, I go to those conferences and I look forward to hearing great minded preachers. I enjoy hearing people like uh, Dr. L.K. Carey, old man up around 90 years old, but has a brilliant mind. Dr. Winfrey Hope, I enjoy like John Adolph and, and uh, Brother West, uh, Ralph West. I, I enjoy hearing those people. Uh, Dr. Uh, John Wesley, all of those guys. Marcus Cosby. And I enjoy them so much, I get their CDs, I get this and that, and I, I, try, not, I try not to preach what they preach because there's people that heard them preach and they'll say, well, Crowley just copied off of him. No, I want to listen to how they develop the word and try to do something that will help me to be a better preacher. But hear this. Jesus said, you foolish, you slow of heart, You got the word. You heard him. Now watch this. There are people. You remember the story of Lazarus? Thank you, Holy Ghost. You remember the story of Lazarus when, uh, well, they say his name was Lazarus, diabetes, uh, you, you know, when uh, the rich man died and all of this. And uh, uh, one, uh, Lather, the Lazarus, I believe it was, was the angels come and got him and took him to glory. And it said, Davies, he died and went to hell. And so in hell, he lifts up his eyes and he's, he's saying to the Lord in glory, said, let Lazarus come and dip his finger in water that I, 
He may cool my scorching tongue. Look what, look what God says. No, he can't come to you and you can't come to him for there is a guff fix between you and him. And so the guy said, well, how about, how about letting him go back and, and uh, tell my brothers? I got, I got five brothers at home, five. And, and I, I'm, I'm determined this is not where they want to come. Will you send him back and tell my five brothers, don't come to this place? What does Jesus say? Jesus said, nope. Can you do it? They have Moses and the prophets. Watch this. If they will not hear Moses and the prophet, they are not going to hear somebody who comes back from the dead. I like the way scripture builds up on scripture and how we uh, to teach scripture with scripture. Now, that was, a, that, was a true, that was a true statement right out of the word of God. And God says, Jesus says to those boys, Cleophas said, uh-uh. They got Moses and the prophet. And if they're not going to hear the word of God, they're not going to hear anybody that comes from the dead. Proof text. Jesus is talking to these boys. He is one who died. He was dead, y'all. He died and he was buried. He was put in a bar or two. He came back and he began to speak to them and they still didn't believe it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just talking about what text is showing me right here. They, they didn't believe it. Whew. Glory to God. Glory to God. They, 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 they walking with him. They are talking with him. And they do not know who he is. How, must, how, how long must the Lord hang around us and hang out with us that we don't grasp hold to his voice. We need to soften tenderly. Jesus is calling. He's calling. You, you ever hear him calling? Whispering sometime early, early in the mornings and sometime when I'm on the road all by myself, sometime at night, sometime in the middle of the day, sometime early in the morning, I hear him whispering yeah, yeah. in my ear. And sometimes I feel like I've not done enough. I feel like I'm about ready to throw in the towel, but I hear him saying, soft and tenderly, hang on in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And make no mistake about it, I know whose voice it is. I know it's Jesus. So, what, what do you do? It's unbelievable. You, 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 you want me to believe that this man died and he rose again? The proof is in the pudding. He walking with you. He talking with you. He sitting down with you. Believe it. What's it going to take? Believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, you, 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 you know, you know old, old, old guy, he was, he was preaching one day, and boy, he just kicked his heels together. He said, preach, boy, preach. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, y'all, this is some good stuff. 
<laughs> I, I hope somebody over the Facebook said amen because I, listen, this is some good word. I'm telling you, it's some good word. <sighs> what do you do when you don't know what to do? Where do you go when you don't know where to go? Who do you run to when you don't know who to run to? And the psalmist said, run to that rock that stands higher than I. He walked with him. They, in fact, they didn't have to ask him to walk. They didn't have to ask him to join. He, he voluntarily invited himself into their conversation, into their brokenness. And I tell you, there's somebody Maybe, maybe not in this place, but maybe somebody's listening to me over Facebook right now. There's that still small voice. And you know you're going through. You're hurting. You're in pain. And he's walking along beside you and saying, what is this that you're discussing? What is this that has you so upset? What is it that have you about to lose your mind? Come on, boys, just keep on walking. Keep on walking. Today is a good day to accept him, receive him, and say yes to it. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Fall fresh on me. That's what we should be saying. God, I want you to move on the altar of my heart today. You may be wondering, is this a good choice? I'm going to tell you just like, Somebody said about the virus. Some people said, it's not if, it's when. They said all of us going to get it. I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I do know this. With God to help, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And some people are afraid. Many of us are afraid. It's scary. It's scary. Because we don't, we don't know. We don't know. We, we, you know, we, Lord, help me, Jesus. You know, I, I was at a place yesterday. I went, and uh, it, it really disgusted me. And I, you know, <clears throat> I went in the bathroom, and I was at this McDonald's. And, uh. Brother James, he's, he's, he's over kitchen and stuff. So you, you, you got to watch these fellas. You got to tell them, do your business, wash your hands. Do your business, wash your hands. Washing your hand is not putting one hand under there and letting a drop of water touch it. See, I... I look at stuff like that because you you can mess with my food, you know. I don't want to be too graphic. And so I watch. You come out, you don't even put on a glove. I would have felt better if I had seen you put a glove on. So what am I saying? Who's to say we might all get it? Because you don't know. But I tell you what. If I die today, I'm going to die in the Lord. And there ain't but two ways to die. Two ways. You either die with him or you die without him. Today is a good day. 
to trust the Lord. Believe. He died. Believe. He rose again. Believe they whipped him and blood came from him. But believe also thousands of people over 500 really, seen him at one time being lifted up being received back into heaven this is a good day to trust the Lord the doors of the church is open I led a Christian experience candidate for baptism if you're here if you're on Facebook and you want to reach out to us we certainly want to take the time and share with you and we believe we know what to say to help you and to lead you to the body of Christ if you want to be a part of this church we certainly welcome you maybe some other church we can help you get to another church if that's your choice as long as it's a Bible believing church God loves you This is a good day to receive him. I want to just ask God to move today. God, there are some things that's unbelievable and it's hard for us to believe when we've seen a man die on the cross and seen him put in a borrowed tomb. And the door was closed with the big stone. And for him to stay there three days. And the third day morning, he gets up. That's unbelievable. But he did it. And we ask you today to help nine hour unbelief wherever we fail you, wherever we need help to believe, we're dependent on you right now. Touch us, dear God, in the name of Jesus. This is a good day. Trust him and obey. The doors of the church is open for letter, by letter Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. so much. Thank you for allowing us to share today. We pray that something has been said that will encourage your hearts. God is good. He is greatly to be praised. I thank God for Minister Nikki. I thank uh, Brother Tim who is uh, an excellent help, a great help and uh, one who has proven himself uh, to be a great, great person and one who I believe loves the Lord. And we do appreciate him. And uh, he comes from good stock. And uh, I 
I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I say that with all sincerity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing uh, you who are here. And again, we want to say uh, for those who are listening to us or on Facebook, at least give us a thumbs up, a heart or something. Let us know uh, that you are listening to us and you enjoy it hearing. And uh, if you didn't enjoy it, just say, oh, bless your heart. And uh, you do that, and I'm going to say, who said that? But uh, no. Uh, hey, I, I don't mind criticism, but I do know I try to preach the word. I try to preach the word. Thank you, thank you. If you want to be a blessing to the church, you can do that uh, on Giblify. Uh, we certainly would appreciate it. And I uh, want you to just keep on praying for us. We'll uh, be with our Sunday school this evening at 3.30. And uh, we'd like for you to join in on Zoom if you uh, care to do so. We would appreciate it. Uh, so very much. My wife is not here uh, today. Uh, we, she and I are the only one uh, at the house uh, uh, the last day. Uh, everybody's out of town, so, uh, you know, sometimes uh, mom law don't feel the best and et cetera, so we have to do what we have to do. Amen. But thank God for her, and uh, we want to just say amen. Thank God for Sister Crawley. She usually here help us out. And uh, Sister Nikki, thank you so much. Thank you for amen, and thank God. Uh, let's continue to pray one for the other. Thank you, Brother James. Good to see you. Good to see uh, Anwar, Anwar Lewis. And uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, Anwar, his uh, grandfather, was one of the uh, uh, main deacons back years ago of the St. Mark Baptist Church. Eddie Lewis. Amen. Yes, sir. Eddie Lewis. Eddie Lewis. Yeah. Yes, as his grandfather. So thank you. Thank you, Anwar. Anwar told me he was coming, and uh, he's here, and I appreciate that so very much. Amen. Amen. Good to see Brother James, and uh, thank God for him. Amen. All right, well, to him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us spotless before the Father in heaven, your love, your majesty, sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, rest God, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, we say amen, amen. All righty.